I don't know who to blame for what you're about to see. Is it my fault? Is it Mel's fault? Is it Cassidy's fault? I mean, no one's got a gun to my head. But I'm going to be reading Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue. Cassidy says this is the worst book she's ever read. Steph liked it, I think. This is a dark romance, I believe. Pretty smutty, I believe. Not my thing. But it's the smut den. And uh, I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> so welcome to a vlog and welcome to the journey. Um, I'm gonna get started and read this. I honestly have absolutely no idea what this is about. Couldn't tell you. No idea whatsoever. Um, do, I don't even want to read the back. I think I'm just going to go into it with the absolute bare minimum knowledge that I have, which is dark romance, kind of smutty. I'm imagining like monster porn here. I, I don't know. Maybe it isn't going to be about as bad as I think. I am prepared for this to possibly be the worst book I've ever read. So... I'm either going to be surprised or validated. But let's dive in and find out where we head with this. Happy Smart Den. We are off to a cracking start with the content warning on page one. Very much appreciated. Uh, contents may be triggering. And here's all the things within it. Oh dear, this is going to be interesting. It is very weird to see mention of a band that I used to absolutely love. Still do. Like, don't love as much as no, no, like, I like their old stuff. Um, but All Time Low. Like, the main characters just casually listening to All Time Low. Weird. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little way in now. Uh, I'm on page 70. So, progress has been made. Um, the writing is so fucking cringy. Like, it's, it has irrationally irked me how there was a scene with some tarot cards and how, like, dark and ominous they made the death card seem. Now, I'm not, like, super into tarot. I have some decks. I'm more into oracle cards than tarot cards. But, like, it just has irritated me how they're making the death card seem all scary because it's death. And, like, the death card isn't that bad, guys. Doesn't mean you're gonna die. That's not what that means. <laughs> um, so that's irrationally annoyed me. Um, and we've already had masturbation. Like, she's met this dude once, twice, maybe. And she's already in the shower masturbating over him. Like, they've exchanged a handful of words with each other. Um, but it was just funny. I don't think it's supposed to be funny, but the writing is really fucking gringy. So there's that. Um, I'm going to carry on because I have a lot of reading to do. So let us proceed. <laughs> right. So you know that guy that 10 pages ago she was masturbating over in the shower? He's now fingered her in an alley. Just... Just fing fingered her in an alley. What the fuck? This is literally the third time she's met this man. And she just followed him out into an alley. And then he was all like, oh, do you want to play a game, doll? Um, and fingered her in an alley. And then got his mate to lick his finger. This vlog is going to be full of spoilers, by the way. I'm just going to be <laughs> hashing out this whole book. Um, what the fuck? third time she's met him and it was it's just so cringily written like it's just cringy and gross and I mean it's not like the fingering grosses me out like that's a pretty standard form of foreplay like <laughs> it's just the way it's written it's so grim and then they're getting his mate to lick his fingers afterwards in front of her in the alley and like, literally the third time she's met him, they've exchanged not even a hundred words. It's literally, I'm on page 82. It's been, like, ten pages since she was masturbating over him in the shower. Um, I just feel like this was a bad decision. 
and I'm going to continue my bad decision. Let's see what happens after the finger fucking in the alley. It just gets cringier. I've just read this line to Jake because it made me laugh. <laughs> um, bend me over and fuck me. Fuck my cunt, please. It's just so stumbly and blunt. Like, there's no... I don't know, there's no passion in those words. There's no... no feeling. I don't... I just... It's so bluntly and cringily written. I can't get over that. Um, but she now knows that he's a demon. He's a demon. She's worked out how to summon him. Um, and he's just ripped apart a monster in front of her and she's all like, oh my god, I've never been so horny in my life other than maybe that time I took ecstasy at my 18th birthday party. But she is dripping at the sight of him. Um, it's It's funny. You know, I'll give it that. I'm entertained. Trying to balance you on my knee. You might fall. Um, I feel like I'm making some decent progress in this. I am on chapter 19, page 177. We have had sex in a graveyard. Like, bent over a tombstone, picked up, legs around the neck, dangling upside down. Like, I don't understand how that works, personally. Um, we've had that. And we've got more into the, like, dark, demonic side of it. So our main character in this is a ghost-hunting YouTuber and a college student. Um, and she accidentally summons this demon. And this demon is in service to this family that run this town. And they want this girl as a human sacrifice but this demon wants this girl for himself to have sex with like he wants to do all sorts of filthy things with her and he talks about that regularly um and he started having his way with her um we had the finger fucking in the alley <laughs> and we've had the graveyard i i don't know that all sorts in the graveyard. And now the cat is at risk. I don't care about these characters, but the moment you put one of their pets at risk, this cat is about to get like snatched up by this monster. I feel for the cat. The cat's called Cheesecake. So cute. Um, would I care if our main character was snatched up by a monster? Absolutely not, because I don't know anything about her other than her sexual fantasies. Character work is not there. Also, I was talking to Steph about it and I think the reason I find the sex scene so awkward and cringy is possibly secondhand embarrassment. Like, I don't, I don't do well with secondhand embarrassment. And I think when the sex scenes are that, like, blunt and beggy and... Well, it's just embarrassing, you know? So, there's that. I want to say, like, oh, at least the, like, demonic and witchy aspect of it is interesting. But it's kind of not. Like, he's a demon in service to this family. There's a grimoire that holds the power. And there's a witch and an old god at the bottom of a mine where they want to throw human sacrifices and stuff. Like, it's just not interesting enough. And I don't know if it's necessarily supposed to be, because it's clearly, like, it's an erotic romance. Well, would you call it romance? I don't know. It's... Its main purpose isn't the plot, is it? But I'm getting there. I'll let you know when there's more cringy shit. And what happens to the cat? Because I'm, I'm scared for the cat. Can confirm. The cat is fine. The cat was fine. Everything to do with the little kitty cat cheesecake is fine. And now they've done the whole, like, Beauty and the Beast scene where, like, he's injured after he said he wouldn't protect her, but then he's protected her. And now she's tending his wounds and they've had that, like, soft moment of, like, talking to each other and understanding him. Because he's just a poor tortured soul. Um, and now they're probably going to have sex again. So, 
in fact, they're definitely going to have sex again, because I'm pretty sure the last line of that chapter was, um, the sight of them made my cock twitch. Uh, so here comes more porn. Yay. So they had the sex. Of course they did. Um, and they were, like, acting out her deep, dark fantasy desires, which makes sense with what some of the stuff at the beginning of the book in those uh, content warnings said. They they were necessary for some of the shit that was going on there. Um, I'm over halfway now. Um, I will say, I feel like it's either got less cringy or I've got used to it. I don't know which way. But I'm definitely not feeling as cringed out about it. Maybe the characters, because they've got used to each other, it just, just doesn't feel as awkward and embarrassing than when they'd like only met for two occasions. I don't know. Um, but I'm about halfway. I still don't think I would say like I'm enjoying it. And I still don't really know or care about these characters at all. But over halfway. So we shall see what happens next, I guess. Alright, quick update before I go to bed. Jake's fast asleep, Finn's fast asleep. I should be asleep. Um, I am 300 pages into this. Um, I feel like it's trying to thicken the plot with the, like, monstrous, the, the witchy aspect and stuff, and it's just doing a, a poor job. Like, I don't give a shit, you know? I don't care about any of... No, because that makes it sound like I just want more sex. And that's not what I want either. But like, I don't care about the plot because I don't care about these characters because the character depth is as shallow as a teaspoon. Um, so I, I just don't care about anything that happens to them. So I don't care about the plot. So where I feel like they're trying to thicken the plot and do something, it's just not, like, I, I don't give a shit. But then when it goes to, like, the sexiness and the sex scenes, it's just very, it's very heavy. Um, and again, because I don't care about the characters, it just is so, like, blunt and forceful. And, I mean, we've got some dark sexual fantasies in here. And, like, I feel like people probably would think, oh, this isn't for you because you won't like the, like, dark romance aspect of it. That doesn't bother me. Like, the dark sexual fantasies thing doesn't bother me. What bothers me the most is that I don't care about these characters, so I don't care if they develop feelings for each other along the way. I don't care if they don't. I don't, like, I just don't care because it's so shallow. But I will say the, like, secondhand embarrassment, I think I might have already mentioned this, the secondhand embarrassment has kind of worn off a bit as the characters have let's say, become more comfortable with each other. Like, they've had more interactions. Um, so it's not as, like, awkward and uncomfortable to be like, oh, he's a hot guy I saw him once. Let him have his way with me in an alley while his friend watches. Like, that scene at the beginning, to me, is still the most uncomfortable one. And we have had scenes of a darker sexual nature. But that fingering in the alley one <laughs> just stuck with me as being really uncomfortable. Anyway, yeah, 300 pages in. I need to go to bed, though, so I'm going to have to finish this at some point over the weekend. But not tomorrow, because I have other plans tomorrow. So I will continue in a couple of days. We're going to have to take a break. We'll see how I feel when I come back to it. <laughs>
can come out of there. Uh, I finished the book. Come here. Finn wants to be involved. He's a good boy. Oh, you gonna sit down? Go on then, sit down. Um, I finished the book. I know it's been like a couple days since I last updated you on it, um, but I have filmed some B-roll of me finishing it tonight. Hello, Finny boy. Um, so I had like 150-ish pages left and I've just sat and finished it. Finn? Really? Phone? Really? This is why I keep you on silent all the time. Yeah, 150-ish pages left. Um, and there were just more weird scenes. You could probably tell from my face in that clip of me reading it. But, like, the scene... They're supposed to be running from the, for their lives from, like, people that want to murder her and sacrifice her to an underground god or whatever. Um, and the response when they reach the safety of a hotel room is oral sex, let's pierce your nipples, sit on this enormous dildo, here's a vibrator, here's some nipple clamps, when you're on the edge I'm gonna shove a needle through your nipple. That, that's not, not my vibe, you know? Not my vibe. And I think at the end, like, where it was supposed to be, like, tense and emotional, it just, it wasn't because I still didn't give a shit about any of these characters. I did not care. The way the relationship developed and then the, like, change in pet name just gave me the ick. This book gave me the ick. I'm not a fan. And I think... <sighs> It's a mix of the secondhand embarrassment, I think, and also just the weird circumstances. Because it's not just the, like, sexy scenes, but it's the circumstances that lead to those scenes. And my inability to suspend my disbelief to a point where that would be anybody's logical response in that situation. You are about to die. Let's have sex. So I think because of that it just took me out of the story quite a lot. So it's logical rating is just like in the fucking gutter. Shall we put it through core pile for fun? Let's put it through core pile for fun. Characters, right, flat. Thin. I don't know anything about them other than they have sex with each other and one of them's a demon, one of them is like a ghost vlogger on YouTube uh, but I don't know anything about them. They exist. I give it a four. Atmosphere. Atmosphere wasn't terrible. Like there was some creepy atmosphere bits where it was like the smell of like rotting corpses and stuff. Um, and there was like this creepy atmosphere around her cabin at times. All right, I'll give it a six for that. Writing gives me the ick, cringes me out, absolutely not. We can give it a three. Plot can also have a three. <sighs> Intrigue can have a two. I'm just flying through this. Logic can have a two. Um, enjoyment can have a one because I did not have a good time with this. This scores a grand total of three on Core Pile, which is a two star rating. How do, oh, it's that atmosphere rating. Fucking atmosphere, it doesn't deserve two stars. But I didn't DNF it, but I didn't DNF it because I was doing it for this vlog. I can't believe I've just wasted my fucking time reading this. This icked me out. But it has opened me to a lot of conversations as I've been reading it about why it icks me out and it's that as i say secondhand embarrassment i don't know because it's not just the sex i can read a book with a sex scene and not get secondhand embarrassment as i keep saying it's the circumstances that lead to it and the fact that that fingering scene at the beginning where she's seen this guy once before was like oh yeah he's a bit saucy second time follows him into an alley and he's just like 
take your pants off. Let me shove a finger or two up there and then let my best mate lick my fingers. Like, from then onwards, I was just... I couldn't suspend my disbelief that that's a thing. But then is that just because of me and my preferences? I don't find things like that sexy. Like, having those sexual encounters with a stranger in an alley? No. No. Forming a connection with someone and then doing those things. I need that emotional connection there first before anything you do can be at all appealing to me. Um, but that's just a preference on my part because there are people out there, I know there are people out there, I know people that do this, that love having sex with strangers. I just can't relate. And because I can't relate, is that why it gives me that secondhand embarrassment and gives me the ick? I don't know. Anyway, this isn't a video about my sexual preferences. <laughs> this is a video about the fact that I read this. It's given me the ick. It's weirded me out. I don't want to read anything else from this series. I don't plan on continuing. I don't want to read anything else from this author. I'm very sorry, Harley LaRue. Um, for those people that have enjoyed it, good for you. I'm happy for you. Uh, less happy for me. Not quite the worst book I've ever read. I won't, I won't say that. Could this be the worst book I've ever read? I've had the thoughts, the discussion, the debate has gone on in there, but I have, I think, come to the conclusion that it's maybe the second worst book I've ever read. Entirely personal preferences on those sexy things, but I don't think that detracts from the fact that I don't know anything about these characters. I don't care about these characters because I don't, there's no emotional attachment to them because we don't get to know them and there is no exploration of why these characters come together other than just primal instinct, I guess. And I just, I can't get behind that. It's not, it's not for me. I don't understand it enough. And I'm sorry about that. The plot? was ridiculous. Like, maybe it had potential to be something better. Like, it was trying to be this dark, demonic plot. I don't think it explained anything enough. It didn't set up the history and the context of what was going on in this town. And again, the character work was so poor that, like, understanding what drives them to create that plot just didn't happen, but I also feel like I need to stop trying to analyse this book and be critical of it in that way because I don't think that's what it was written for. It was written to be a steamy demon porn book. And it is. It's just not the right sort of steamy for me. I want emotional connection in my smut, please. <laughs> I think there is a chance I could enjoy it a little bit more then. So, if you have any smutty recommendations for me where there is actual emotional connection, feel free to recommend it down below. Maybe I'll give Smut another go. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me whilst I put myself through this. Hope you all had a great time in the Smut Den if you were participating in that. If you weren't, I hope you've just enjoyed watching me experience demon porn. Horrifically, this is not the first demon porn book I've read either. The other one I read was much better than this. With a Vengeance by Freydis Moon is the other demon porn book I've read. I like that a lot better, just saying. Cool, alright. I'll see you on whatever happens next. Hopefully, I have a better time with whatever that is, but... I'll see you there. <laughs> Bye.